You're watching TVC Breakfast. The activities of pipeline vandals not only jeopardizes the country's oil earnings, it has caused the death of many and destruction of property. Now, despite awareness on the dangers of siphoning raw product from pipelines, the hazardous impact of uh, spilled petroleum on the environment and consistent clampdown on oil thieves, many still dare to engage in the practice, uh, risking their lives and the lives of others uh, just to make quick cash. One such glaring example of the destructive effect of vandals is Thursday's incident where two persons were killed and 30 vehicles burned after vandals bust a few pipeline causing an explosion in Ijegun, Lagos. It is the latest in a long string of such accidents across the country. Joining me is public affairs analyst Smart Akbaju. Thank you for joining us on TVT Breakfast. Thank you and good morning. Now, we get to see um, a lot of these activities of vandals year in, year out, despite the fact that they are aware that uh, there are risks involved, the risk of them losing lives as well. But uh, we also haven't seen convictions, so to speak, or arrests really being made with regards to this. Perhaps, is this one of the issues that is driving activity? Of first, you see, first I sympathize with those that lost their lives and properties, and um, I, I, I really uh, commiserate with the entire family. Quickly, you see, just like an arm robber, an arm robber knows that if he is caught, that he's likely to lose his life. But you see the trend coming up more and more because their first thing is that they know they are going to succeed. So when they now when they now uh, 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 when they're now caught in the process, oh, they felt they just felt it's unfortunate that they are caught. So the structure in place, so from what you're saying, is not deterring them. No, at all. One again, we have seen so many pipeline vandalization, whatever. How many has been caught? And those that have been caught, have we had any logical conclusion of their prosecution? I think no is the answer. Thereafter, again, you now look at it again, is that because this has happened, I probably want to focus more on the look, on preventing. How do we prevent further occurrence? Mm -hmm. How we prevent it is that right now the regulatory agencies like DPR, PPMC or whatever that is in charge of those things, go and, you see, first of all, do a mapping of your, of your pipeline routes. And then the various areas where the pipelines fall into, say in Ijegun, Ijegun has a CDA. Ijegun has a DPO. Ijegun has some security personnel attached to Ijegun. Now, engage these people and tell them the um, uh, uh, policing and securing this pipeline is under your responsibility, though we give you some stipends. Uh, but, but do you think the people will trust uh, the system? Because uh, there are situations where people get to say, this is the activity, because uh, obviously, like they said, this has been going on. So it is possible they know these things, but then uh, how would they trust the system that says, if they are exposed, what happens to them? Are they safe? You see, That's I'll come aspect. back to the fact that let them even put up a structure in place first, where they, they, at least you, you can call somebody, say, okay, in the first place, we must see it first as our responsibility, that if I live in Ijegun and I can see the activities of, vine, of, of, of pipeline vendors, I should be able to make noise. Not even me, we should be able to make noise so that at least it could be nipped at the board. Because if you don't, you see, you are the first recipient of, of, what, of the calamity. You see, that is why, because, and again, is that we feel it is not my business, it is not your business, that is why we are getting it bad every day. If we make it first a collective responsibility that we must ensure that we police and protect the pipeline in our area, because if we don't, if we see people doing something, say something. But it is because, again, we are not even encouraging doing that. That's why I asked the question so of trust in the it, system. It, it, it is because of the fact, it, that's why I said it is a systemic failure. It's a human error that we keep paying for dearly. Every time, day in, day out, we pay, for, we pay for the fact that we refuse to act on what we are supposed to do. And nobody has ever been punished. Nobody. You see, for the fact that this thing has been going on, we're in an area where we have that DPO. That DPO should have been the first person to be queried. There is, a, there is an SSS man attached to that area that is supposed to be giving feedback reports. He's not doing his job. That person should be supposed to be, there is a, a civil defense person that is covering that area. He's not doing anything. There is a CDA too they are all, that, are, that, are, that has not even performed their responsibility. Let us begin to look at preventive. You see, preventive measure is just, let us do it right. 
Let us what will be these this measures? What will be these measures in the first place is that DPR takes the first initiative that, look, let us secure our pipeline. Let us go and in all the areas where our pipeline has passed through, let us go and engage By securing, everybody. Do you mean that they should move people out of there? No. People? If we say secure is that, look, if you see any, look, the, 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 this pipeline, if this pipeline, if you see anything coming up on this pipeline, like, ru 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 like rupture pipe, let us know immediately. This is the line to call. And immediately you call this line, immediately you send a text message to this line, it's not coming up, please make noise to the public. So at least, and these days, whether you like it or not, public, public awareness is becoming higher. Yeah. And the moment you make a little noise, you see people, you see them acting. Yeah. So if it is by making noise that we we'll act, then let us make noise. So we must prevent, we must, we must, a, a Jago incident is one that is becoming too many. Mm. If you look at the total pro property and lives that have been lost within Ijegu in the past 15 years due to a pipeline explosion, it is huge. Mm. So we must not allow this to happen again. And not only in Ijegu, we must ensure that all over Nigeria that we have pipelines, let us protect the pipeline. Put the DPO on the, put the DPO, you, you can even be giving some stipend, DPR could be paying some stipend as security of the pipe, either to the, to the police station, not by giving them cash. All Maybe right. go and fix the generator for them. Maybe go and even build some this thing for them, uh, some, some, some stations. Maybe buy them some ammunition. Maybe right. buy them torch lights. Maybe buy them vehicles. We, we, have, we have to leave it at this point. Smart Akwejo, thank you for your time on TVC Breakfast. Thank you. You're watching TVC Breakfast. The activities of pipeline vandals not only jeopardizes the country's oil earnings, it has caused the death of many and destruction of property. Despite awareness and the dangers of siphoning raw product from pipelines, the hazardous impact of spilled petroleum on the environment and consistent uh, clampdown on oil thieves, may still dare, many still dare to engage in the practice, practice risking their lives and the lives of others just to make quick cash. Now, one such glaring example of the destructive uh, effect of vandals is Thursday's incident where two persons were killed and 30 vehicles burned after vandals burst a fuel pipeline, causing an explosion in Ijegu, part of Lagos. It is the latest in a long string of such accidents across the country. Joining me is public affairs analyst Smart Akpejui. Smart, it's good to have you join us right now. Good morning, Mike. Now, good this morning. is not the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, tenth time that we've had these issues of pipeline explosion in parts of Nigeria, and especially where it is taking place right now. And it, 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 it seems obvious that there hasn't been any outright uh, strategy to put an end, a total end, to uh, uh, this trend. How helpless or hopeless is the situation for Nigeria? Well, helpless and hopeless, uh, I think, um, is an appropriate word to use. Because, you see, if an incident happens once, then you can say that it's an accident. But if it keeps occurring, then it is no more an accident. Then it becomes the fault of inefficiency of the regulatory um, agency. I sympathize with those that lost their properties and more especially those that lost their lives yesterday. May their soul rest in peace. Yeah, really sad it is a sad one for that family now. Going further, when you look at the Ijegun incident, again, it's also pathetic. It talks about, again, the ineptitude of our security agencies. You look at it that, in the, what, if you look at it critically, of course, looking at what is, being, what is going on now, you see that there is a tanker on ground. Two mm. tankers got burnt mm. in the process. One of the tankers is fully loaded. The other one was in the process of loading when they say security agencies got to that place. Mm. There are some things that we cannot say on here because of the fact that maybe because you don't have a strong evidence, but let's leave that. But let's look at what is on ground. In this first place, this is not happening. Ye the to yesterday incident, it's not the first time they are suffering for, for that place. There must have been a breakdown of communication or something happened, or maybe, maybe they ran against luck, and perhaps the security agency came to this place. But however, the people of this community, on your new segment, I they, they, they interviewed some persons. They said this has been going on for a while. If it has been going on for a while, what have they done? What about have you it? done exactly? Did you report to the police? Did you report to, the, to, to DPR and whatever? 
Did you even call the Lagos State Emergency Line to report that this thing is going on? Uh, and it's sad and enough. You see, and it's see? sad enough that one of those of two, the persons who died and all of that are property and people and relatives of people within the village. Yes. So when you even look at it, you see, first, the, the, um, there is a systemic failure that is. The people that are supposed to take action refuse to take action. And even though there is so much distrust that even though when you report, you will say, even if I report, nothing will be done. You understand? The community leaders, the ballers, all these people, we've never held anybody accountable, responsible for his in inaction. And well, that is why you see all this thing keeps going on. Uh, uh, but w w how, w would you blame them? Because the point there is that there's no constitutional rule for traditional rulers in that sense. So no, it is, it is the issue of the morals and the, and, and the heritage of what the people have, isn't you it? You see, if you're talking about constitutional rule, hmm. do you need a constitutional rule to report an ugly incident in your area? Do you need, an, do you need a constitutional rule to report insecure threats to security in your area you don't need it mm. you see it's because of the fact that when such things happen nobody has been held to account for it the dpo if the dpo in that the dp of that of the police officers in closer into that area the the cdas uh chairpersons the uh what's it called the ballers and whatever all everybody that but do we still have do we have sss there should be SSS covering the, the whole of that area. Mm. But when, when there is a complaint that there is, there is a DAT or the shortage of personnel in almost all the agencies of government, uh, you, you can expect that uh, maybe some areas will not be covered. You see, in the first place, we have people living in this community. Mm. It's just taking advantage it's just of taking a, just, it's just, it. It's just a phone call right. or a text message across to you the relevant agency. All right. But you see them not taking, even though when you do it, you see them not taking action. All right, Smart, we have to leave you here now and hope uh, that the best will be, uh, the best strategy will be taken to curb all of this. Smart, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Right.